Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with the exact line for you now on this Monday, June the 1st, 2015. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I gave some great gigs. Since I haven't been in a tag line in about a week, and I've had some gigs since then. DJ Zach Attack gigs. First things first, Tuesday was my last Romeo High School baseball game of the regular season. Varsity Boys took on Utica Chieftains. And they won the last game. It was an intense game. Utica tried to tie it up, but Romeo got the win after all. In the bottom of the seventh. Or should the top of the seventh. They only do seven innings in high school. It's been a fun season. It's been great to come back to baseball. DJing the full season again. After so long to celebrate my 10th year of DJing. My decade of attack. Where it all began. Romeo Baseball. So I want to thank the team. Coaches Kessling and Delamere for a great season. I was heading in for a one-off season just to celebrate this occasion, but who knows? May I'll be back next year. I haven't made the decision yet. The next day, Wednesday, was Romeo Senior Brunch and Lunches. It was my last thing for Romeo High this school year. So I won't be returning there until probably in the fall for football games and stuff. So it's great to end the season in the year in Romeo. Hi, with senior bunch of lunches. I didn't do prom. I did the snow coming, but I didn't do the prom. But make up for it, I did lunch and brunches. Lunches and brunch. Senior bunch before the prom. It was a fun day. But the lunches were good. Uh, B lunch was good because I had pe a little bit of a break dancer doing my lunch. And B lunch, that was cool. The only bad thing was it was PLC. I didn't expect PLC that they, they I get off an hour earlier. So lunches are quicker. I didn't know that till like last minute. So, but it was still a fun lunch and lunches. Lunch and lunches on Friday. On, two, on Wednesday. Loopy today. But on Friday, this past Friday, I didn't have a gig. Kicking up my summer tour. Summer escapade tour, as I'm calling it. It's by my Janet Jackson, who I'll get to. There's some news on her today. Um, surprise, 40th birthday. I liked the vibe. It was retro 80s themed. They had like, all these, like, you said, the decorations were cool. The show was fun. The kids took over because the adults didn't, they weren't heavy drinkers. I thought there'd be like a crowd. I usually perform in front of 40 year olds in the rowdy party crowd. These 40 year olds weren't that much of a party crowd. They're more like wine drinking crowd. No liquor. Because it was in this place called Benny's. Benny! The kids took over. They had to, they had to request. But it was weird to hear 10 year old kids request 50 cents candy shop. A song that was out and they weren't even born yet. And it was gangster song too, so it's kind of weird to play it, but they liked it. They seemed to like it, so. Weird, but don't judge me. They said it. They wanted it. So it was weird to hear him say that, but they obviously because like Taylor Swift, including the new number one song, get to that too, and all that stuff. So it's still a fun show this past Friday. I had three gigs this week. Have a figure lock in Thursday for like the seventh year in a while. Grab party Friday, grab party Saturday. So it should be a fun weekend for me, DJ Wise, again this week. Now, on with the entertainment news for the week and weekend. Starting with your number one movie. Well, the only one week, Tomorrowland got kicked off by the most electrifying disaster movie today. Yes, San Andreas, featuring The Rock, landed big on the top of the charts. Following his big opening last month as part of Fury 7, opened up with 54 million. Not bad. Well, Aloha was a bum bitty bum bitty bum 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 we we'll see how that goes. I hope Entourage bombs. I know I like wall burgers, but come on. And since I did not make a attack line last week, since Monday, it's time for Billboard number one from last week. We have a new number one album. And yes, a new number one single. Adding another one week we have an album. I think if I was correct, it was the Sounds of Pitch Perfect 2. Then I kicked off by 21 Pilots in their album. Being the first number one album. Interesting. But, not only new number one album, like I said, number one single as well. 
At the seven weeks, the reign of See You Again by Wiz Khalifa finally ended. By Bad Boy Taylor Swift. Aided by the video and the remix with Kendrick Lamar that was in the video. The single jump from number 52, which we entered last two weeks ago at 52, landed at number one this past week. So congrats to Taylor on that number one. I'll get to some news on her. On a big surprise she delivered during her concert right here in Detroit, Michigan over the weekend. Now let's get on to some news involving, uh, I mentioned this earlier, much of my summer escapade tour, named and inspired by Janet Jackson's escapade. Well, I mentioned a few weeks ago that Janet Jackson released a video saying that she's planning on releasing a new album this year and going on tour. Releasing her first album since her 2008 album, Discipline. But of course, big thing is, who is going to be her label? Well, we found out today, not only is she rumored to release her new single within 30 days, we also found out her record label. A company she's never dealt with before. She's dealt with a and Records, Universal Music Group, Virgin Records, which is now also part of Universal Music Group since they absorbed EMI, and Island Dev Jam, also Universal. All these Universal labels, now Janet is going to be on BMG. No Pacific label yet. But if I were to pick a label for Janet to be in, if it's BMG, Sony BMG, like possibly RCA Records, but it would only make sense to me since she's wanted to join the Sony BMG bandwagon um, Epic. Her brother's record label. That's what I'm guessing. That's what I'm hoping for. Have full on Jack, have all the Jacksons be on Epic Records. So there you go. Janet Jackson set to release a new single within the next 30 days, according to several reports, from a new record label, BMG. Pacific label, soon, but can't wait to hear some new Janet. It's been a while, so can't wait to hear that, because I'm a fan of hers. So there you go. Now there's some award show news on the CMT Awards. Over the week last week, we found out who's hosting. We knew some performers. And of course, the top nominees include Carrie Underwood, who will make one of our very first post baby appearances at the awards on June the 10th, which is next week. But we now know the hosts. The star of the one of the stars of the former number one movie Pitch Perfect 2, Brittany Snow, and Aaron Andrews. Wow, two female hosts. Interesting. Interesting choices. <coughs> I think Kristen Bell's all <laughs> the last couple of years. But now this year, two beautiful women will host it. Like I said, Brittany Snow and Aaron Andrews should be a fun pairing for next week's EMT Awards for next week. They also announced some, uh, I think they haven't announced any presenters yet. They announced some performers, but not presenters yet. And we're only one week away from the CMA, CMTs. Which, like I said, will take place June the 10th on CMT. So there you go. Now, all this some content news. Uh, got an injury update on a weekend glance. Yes, over the weekend, he was performing in Tijuana, Mexico. And he's on his tour right now after an American tour pit bull last year. He's on his Sex and Love tour, whatever it's called. He had a segment where he has like a video camera drone coming in to shoot a point of view for the fans. So he grabbed, I saw the, I just saw the video. He grabbed the drone. It was his own drone, not a drone that kills people, like government stuff, which I don't want to delve into because I'm not attuned to the government situation. Uh, he grabbed this, this, this drone, and something, uh, he cut his hand on something, and he started bleeding all over the place. And he continued the show for 30 minutes, but then he had to cut it short. He just had surgery to repair it. His representatives released a statement saying that thank you so much for your concern and good wishes. Lots of fans tweeted at him after finding out what happened. Uh, we is currently undergoing reconstructed hand surgery today. He will resume his tour on July 3rd in Mexico City. We appreciate your thoughts and your prayers. Like I said in the statement that Robert released, something went wrong here in an accident at the Plaza del Toros. The players. Like I said, he did go on, but after he got cut, he had to cut it short. 
Pun the puns. So there you go. Enrique Iglesias suffers a hand injury during a concert in Mexico where he cut his hand from a drone by accident and is receiving constructed hand surgery to repair it. He will resume his tour, like I said, next month. Now here's some positive concert news. Right here in the D, where Taylor Swift is, of course, in the early stages of the 1989 World Tour. She's, of course, in a happy mood with the number one single, Bad Blood, number one on Maximum Hot 100, and like I said, her tour just kicking off. The third stop of the tour and second stadium was right here in Detroit this past Saturday night at Ford Field, where 51,000 screaming fans fell for Taylor Swift and some surprise guests. She brought some of her supermodel friends to walk the cart walk doing style. But she's done something she's never done in Detroit before, but she's done in other cities. Bring out a surprise guest to sing a song. Now, as we've seen for the past Taylor Swift tours, Country of Papa Night, she's brought out surprise guests at select cities, like brought out Luke Bryan, Nashville, LA, got Illy Golding and Jennifer Lopez. For the first time ever, Taylor Swift brought out a surprise guest in Detroit. The lead singer of Imagine Dragons, Dan Reynolds, surprised the fans by coming out to sing Radioactive with Taylor. Critics love the show and love the surprise, but the free press said they wish Swift would have done a Detroit-based surprise. Well, she could have, because I think the usual guy who likes to surprise people at Detroit shows, Kid Rock, was busy opening up for the Stones in Columbus. So, she couldn't find any go-to people in Detroit, so she had to go with Dan Reynolds from Imagine Dragons, who I think will be at the Pals in a couple weeks. So, that was a nice surprise for Detroit. That's cool. Taylor did that for Detroit. Make up for the fact the Stones have a shitty opener here in Detroit, Walk the Moon. <laughs> well, all this is get Pat Payson and Sheeran. Said it a few weeks ago as well, when the Stones announced the openers. So, there you go. T-Swizzle arrives in Detroit this past week. And also, she had a Grand Prix call. The Grand Prix was here in Bell Isle, Michigan, here in Detroit, and she had a indie car to promote the uh, concert. And of course, she was in concert, bringing out a surprise guest, then went out to sing Radioactive this past Saturday in Ford Field. I'm going there this September to see ACDC. That's going to be fun. Anyway, that is it for the attack line for today. Thank you very much for watching. All that in mind, y'all been attacked by the news from Zach. See ya, yeah.